Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video in our series of videos dealing with Boolean expressions uh, is going to consider a Boolean expression and how to represent this as a logic gate. So this particular example is going to deal with this particular Boolean expression as, as written here. Uh, has three key terms, as this term here, as this term here and has a final third term here. But before we get started, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to just walk from left to right and we're going to identify how many unique inputs there is into this particular system. Uh, so you can see we have an A, a B, an A, a C, a C, A, B, A, B, C. So the only inputs to this system are A's. So we have an A, we have a B, and we have a C. So there are three inputs. So what we'll do is we'll take our first expression, okay, and we'll parse it from left to right, and we'll build up the the sub, uh, I suppose this is the sub uh, logic set of logic gates to represent this particular expression. And you can see from this expression that we have a main and here, and we have a left operand, and we have a right operand. Uh, so we'll, let's deal with the left operand first. So what we need to do is we need to calculate this inverted, uh, this inversion, but this inverter is over an OR. Before we can do the inverter, we need to do the OR, but before we can do the OR, we need to do the B bar. So that means then we can take the A signal, pass it into the OR, along with the inverted B signal. So we need a B, an inverted B, so what we do is we just take the, the B signal across, give ourselves a bit of space, and we bring this through here to give us a B bar signal, okay? Now that we have the B bar signal, we can pass that into an OR along with the A signal. So let's take the A signal across here, along with the B bar signal into an OR gate to give us our output, which is A OR with B bar. Okay. So now that we have A OR with B bar, we can now negate it by passing it into an inverter. Okay. So we pass it into an inverter, and what we get out the other side is A OR with B bar bar. Okay, and this is the left operand associated with this AND. Okay, but before we do the AND, we need to do the, the right operand. Now, the right operand says that we need to do an OR, but we need to do the OR of an A bar along with a C. Before we can do the OR, we need to have an A bar signal. So, what we'll do is let's just take the A bar signal down here, okay, and let's pass it into an inverter to give us our A bar signal. Now, what we can do is we can take our C signal. So let's take our C signal down here, and let's pass that in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that along with the A bar signal. So this is our C signal. I'm going to pass it into an OR, and what we get out here is we get an A bar OR with a C. Now we have the two operands, the left operand and the right operand. We can pass them into an AND gate to give us, I suppose, the first expression into an AND gate. So that gives us, let's say, expression expression one, which is this expression here, expression expression one. And this is the circuit to represent expression one. Now let's start with expression two. Well, expression two has an AND, a left operand, and a right operand. Before we can do the AND, we need to have a C bar signal. So let's take our C bars down, let's take our C signal down, and let's pass that in through an inverter to give us our C bar signal. Now that we have our C bar signal, we can actually concentrate on the right operand, which is an A ORD with a B bar, but before we do the bar, we need an A ORD with a B. So let's take our A signal down, okay? And let's pass that in along with our B signal, okay? Let's pass that into, into an OR gate. We're getting a little bit messy here. This gives us our A and our B, so this gives us an A ORD with a B. Now we have A ORD with B, we can pass that into an inverter to invert it, keep it on this level here. Okay, so what we get out here is our A ORD with our B bar. So now we have the left operand, which is our C bar. We have the right operand, which is A ORD with B bar. Now we can pass them into an AND gate. Let's do it on this level here. So we're going to take our C bar signal over along with our A ORD with B bar. And we're going to pass that into an AND gate to give us our output, which is C bar, ANDed with A, or with B bar. Okay. 
And now what we can do is we can take these two expressions, yeah, okay, this is expression 2 here, okay, and we can order them together. So the output of this expression 1 is here, and the output of expression 2 is here, so we take both of them across and we pass them in to an OR gate to give us something that looks like this, okay. Concentrating on the third expression, expression 3, okay, expression 3. Before we can do the AND, we need an A bar, so let's take our A bar, our A signal down, okay. Let's pass that into an inverter, okay. What we get out here is A bar. And now we have the left operand, the right operand is a B bar or a C bar. So we need to do a B bar first, so let's take our B signal down, let's pass that into an inverter to give us our B bar signal. We also need a C bar signal, so let's take that signal down. Okay. We need to pass that into an inverter to give us our C bar signal. Now that we have our B bar and our C bar, we can pass it into an OR. So here we go, this goes into an OR. It looks something like this. What we get out is a B bar OR to a C bar. And now we can take our A bar signal and we can AND it. Okay, We can AND it with the B bar OR to a C bar. Okay, to give us something that looks like this and what we end up with here is A bar anded with B bar or with C bar. Okay? We've already ordered these two things together here so now let's pass this third signal in. So the output here is here and let's pass this third signal in to an OR gate. So what we have is we have something that looks like this. So this is an OR and what we have is the output of our function. Okay? Maybe I should just write in these. This is an OR. This is an OR. This is an inverter. This is an OR. This is an OR gate. This is an AND. This is an AND gate. This is an AND. This is an OR. This is an OR. And these things that are self explanatory are, are inverters. So what we have here is we have the output or the schematic uh, or the circuit yeah, for this particular Boolean expression. Now I think what's important and maybe uh, just a little bit of advice here. When I'm doing these you can sort of see, you know, it's a little bit off, yeah. Uh, I have my first level of gates followed by, by my second level of gates followed by my third, my fourth, my fifth and my sixth level of gates. Another important thing here is this, is that although I have the A bar signal here, okay, that's this A bar here that we require, okay, uh, and I need an A bar signal here, I didn't take this signal down okay, and use it. That would actually technically be a reduction that you're applying to your expression. So what we need to do is when we're given a Boolean expression and we want to represent it as a circuit in its full glory, Okay. We shouldn't pull any signals that have gone through a gate yeah, and use them later on in their expression. Otherwise, that's no, it's actually logical to do that, but that's actually uh, doing a reduction. It's eliminating some of the redundancy. Um, but for this, for our purposes, we want to just have a look at the full syntactic or the full glory of the circuit as it would look like with no reductions. We could reduce this expression uh, using Boolean algebra. Uh, and one of, in one of our previous videos, uh, we had a look at that particular reduction. Uh, that particular reduction of that particular expression, uh, I suppose, it reduced down to uh, to a simplification. Uh, it simply reduced down to a bar. Okay. Uh, so this reduction was actually we said in the previous video was equivalent just to a bar. So actually, technically this system here that has this particular circuit could be represented as a circuit that looks like that okay because we know that that's logically equivalent to this that was one of my previous videos where i looked at taking a boolean expression using boolean algebra to reduce it down into its simplest form and the simplest form for this expression was simply a bar they were equivalent we could prove that by not using Boolean algebra, by taking this particular expression here, building its its truth table, which we've done in a previous video, and also looking at the truth table of a bar and showing that the outputs are the same under all inputs, okay, and that would be another proof of equivalence. 
Okay guys, uh, once again this was uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and I hope that video was informative and helped you somewhat. Okay, thanks for your time. Bye bye.